everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jake, this is Dude Ranch DIY. We are back here with the conveyor. As you can see, work has been done. It now has a motor and a tank and everything all mounted up to it, but we will talk about that later. I got here, my buddy Chris is still on the clock, so he has asked me to help him, help me. So he gave me, he's putting me to work. He's got two big air filters here for a Peterbilt tractor that's inside the shop here. And uh, he wants me to clean them out with this filter blaster. So let's check this thing out. All right, guys, Chris is officially off the clock. We got the conveyor in the building here, and this is what he came up with as far as a mount for the tank and the motor and the valve and the pump, the whole nine yards, and it looks pretty good to me. The reason why it's mounted on the axle here is because this whole hay elevator is mechanical, and there's really no constants. When you crank it up using the crank and the handle over here, everything moves um, everything changes pitch and everything changes angle and everything so beyond mounting the motor down here where the splitter is going to be and you know where most of the action is happening the point that would move the least was the axle so that's where chris decided it would be best to mount it to and i wholeheartedly support anything that chris tells me is the right decision the only thing is, when he originally mounted it and welded it up, he didn't know how high we typically run the conveyor, and we typically run it about 12 feet to clear the log arch on the dump trailer. So at 12 feet, you can see the motor's a little bit on an angle. So right now, he's uh, just hooking up the plasma cutter over here. We're gonna cut a couple of the welds, uh, you know, finagle it a little bit and get it so that it's straight when it's at 12 feet, so here we go. All right guys, so as you can see, that's a lot straighter. Um, we just cut three sides of the welds and then we're able to bend it back. Um, there's the gap that we need to now fill in with uh, a bunch of welds.
All right, now we're trying to figure out the trough that's gonna be mounted on the conveyor to match up to the sorting tray on the splitter. We're thinking two 16 inch, I'm sorry, two 24 inch long pieces that'll come out to about here. It'll be tapered going back on an angle on each side of sheet metal to provide kind of a bit of a funnel effect going into the conveyor off of the sorting tray. Now the sorting tray itself, we're also gonna raise up and extend about six inches high to also uh, aid with that funnel effect. So Chris has the bandsaw going again. All right, guys, we got these supports on. These are going to be the beginnings of the trough on the conveyor here. Um, basically what we did, as you can see over on this side, I wanted it to be not exactly kissed up to the rugged made frame here. I wanted it to be able to be a little bit wider just in case I end up getting a different splitter or something down the road or a different configuration. Um, that way we have a little leeway. So we're going three inches out on each side. Chris is taking some cardboard here and uh, we're gonna draw up a template and try and get the sheet metal cut up for it.